Hey, this is Illy Vish from Spiritual Gangster Certified. And if you haven't heard about Anchor and the fact that it's the easiest way to record a podcast, let me put you on. First of all, it's free. And we know we can't get any better than free. And it has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or from your computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you don't have to do any extra footwork. They'll send it over to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more podcast platforms. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So tell me where you're going to find that. (laughs) Can't find it anywhere else. So it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. You want to make sure that if you want to start a podcast that you go get the free Anchor app at anchor.fm to get started. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Spiritual Gangsta Certified. I am your host, Illy Vish. This is the beginning today as of 4.33 p.m. Eastern, the start of tour season 2021. How y'all feeling? See, airy season came through and had... A lot of riled up energy to it. I mean, not that that's to be any surprise with Aries energy in general. But right now, today, I'm excited for so many different reasons. First of all, we have the sun in Taurus, right? Mercury newly in Taurus. Venus slightly newly in Taurus. And of course, this is all joining up with Uranus at 10 degrees of Taurus. So, um, just wanted to come through. I had my Venus return yesterday. That was lit. Felt really, really good. If anybody is interested in at all in understanding what return charts um, significance holds for you, please do reach out to me for a reading. Of course, with Venus, we're going to be talking about the things that are Venusian. And with Venus being home in Taurus, uh, for me, again, I'm a very tactile, tangible person that loves to indulge, very receptive energy, loves food, things that smell good, that look good, just the entire indulgent experience. That's how I explain my Venus sign. Um, Taurus energy itself is about what we have, okay? We got through airy season, learning who am I? And now we're focused on on what we have. In Taurus, this is a tangible energy. Now, Venus rules, of course, both Taurus and Libra. Libra is more of the relational energy of Venus, the social energy of Venus, right? And Taurus is more about the possessive energy of Venus. So as we go into Taurus season... And we have Mercury in Taurus, um, as well as Venus in Taurus. This is already a time frame where we're focused on the tangible. This is money. This is possessions. Okay, this is food, things that come forth from the earth. We think about Taurus as the bull sitting in the field. And the reason that I say this, as a fixed earth sign known for its stubbornness. We don't want to forget that fixed signs in general are better at maintaining. So we're also talking about Leo and Scorpio as well and Aquarius. But fixed earth, (laughs) that is a bull not wanting to move. Okay. The bull is situated in the field. It's not moving unless... And here's where we can bring in some of that Uranus being in Taurus energy. Uranus is like a lightning bolt. It rules Aquarius. It's about sudden change. To get a bull to suddenly want to get up, what do people have to do? That's where cattle prods come um, in handy. And some people may say that's very cool too, and I understand that. But just the image of getting the bull to leave where it has settled in the field has to come with some electricity, some lightning. So that cattle prod to the bull is actually how I describe Uranus being in Taurus. You're getting forced to move out of a comfort zone. 
Conversely, when we talk about the stubbornness of the bull, of this fixed earth sign, we're also talking about how quickly you would want to get out of the way, right? If a bull was charging for you. So whereas Taurus energy may not want to move once it has decided to move, it gonna stay on that course. You better watch out. So the lovely thing about thinking of things seasonally, as far as the weather is concerned in the Northern Hemisphere, we are discussing astrology that is based on the sun's ecliptic or Western astrology, is to actually think about the qualities of the seasons. I cannot stress this enough. This is something I want people to become more familiar with doing, more comfortable with doing, because I tell you from the depths of my soul, it will better acclimate you to understanding astrology and what we be talking about. I don't ever like to seem confusing or too above in explaining astrology or astrological concepts to people when really it's just understanding the essence of what we are talking about. So as it relates to seasons, right now Taurus season is starting the middle the middle of spring it's going to maintain spring okay this is that time frame that i love the most about spring aries season is always good and lit because you're coming from winter arriving um to a point where you know we're permitted to have warmer days okay the days are slowly getting longer there's things happening actually when we think about it a lot of times we're so excited <laughs> for airy season because the winter has been cold and long and it's our first glimpse of heat. Now, the bull comes to maintain all of that, okay? So at this point, what I wanted to look at, especially with Mercury conjunct uh, the sun right now, listen, Mercury and Taurus natives, hello to you guys. Mercury, of course, is our thought processes. It is how we process things, how we communicate things, and communication can be done through writing, through speaking, you know? Now, with it in Taurus, it is more value-based and grounded. Now, when we think of the earth signs in general and why they work well together, it is because of this groundedness, this practicality that is about them, you know? Now, with Taurus energy, it's gonna really pay attention to the value of what it has because Taurus is really about, you know, I can hold on to something and sometimes Taurus energy can kind of come off like it is unwilling to let go of some certain things, but things that are truly of a tangible value will be important, okay? We can also talk about value systems as far as this is concerned, but our thoughts are on with this Mercury um, transiting the sign of Taurus, our thoughts are on you know, what is valuable. You know, your self-worth also ties into this. This is the second house, basically, values that we're talking about. The light of the sun giving this life-giving force to both Mercury and Venus. And Venus is about appreciating. And Venus is back home right now, one of its home places. Appreciating what I have. This is a big theme for now, and I wanted to talk about this because not only can we concentrate, concentrate excuse me, on this through Taurus season, just um, for Venus's remaining transit through Taurus, which will end, I think, what, May 9th? Um, there's, there's a lot here. Mercury joining the party, too. Look, what are we focused on? Where have we hankered down? Okay, has what you have committed yourself to of true value to you? Is where you're headed the direction that you're going to keep going just because you've already started this journey? Or does it behoove you to do so? What's of value there? You know, a lot of times people will dig their heels in because of a certain amount of time spent with something or someone or a situation instead of focusing on the value. This is the season to focus on your values. It's also the season to eat well. Let me talk about this. So Taurus being fixed earth, 
We look to Taurus to represent the energy of food. Okay? If you think about it, if the moon wasn't in Cancer, the second place it would like to be is Taurus. Why? Well, because the moon is about mothering and nurturing. And one of the ways that we can nurture others is to feed them. So this this tangible energy of sustenance is what we have here. Eat good, indulge. I know from my Venus return, that's what I have definitely been doing and no joke just really enjoying things it's about the five senses under this Taurus energy so we're not talking about like just really "Mm, okay that tastes pretty good no Mm -mm. I say this all the time this representation of Venus this Taurian part of Venus is the receptive part of Venus as it is a feminine sign all earth signs are feminine right so receiving Taurus likes gifts Okay, and if they want to spoil you, they're going to be about that gift life too. But Taurus energy in general, and everyone has some Taurus energy somewhere in their chart. Maybe if there isn't a prevalence of it, it is still there. So I want people to pay attention to where this this Taurus energy is falling in your chart. Or in the charts of someone's um, energy that you're interested in or want to know about. It's very important to be in tune with that. We cannot overlook where in life we can act Taurian okay so this receptive version of Venus I say it's like Aphrodite lying on a couch being fed the best food and drink listening to the most beautiful music viewing the best art while the best uh, smells and sounds and everything are around it's like the true indulgence this is an indulging season I don't want anybody to forget that because that is very pertinent extraordinarily so to what we have under Taurus energy and now we're going to take a quick break I'll return shortly stay tuned and we are back so um I don't find it coincidental that today is holiday which is 420 for all my cannabis lovers and the pot smokers falls during tourist season. Earth sign. Weed comes from the earth. God put it here for you and for me. To quote Smokey somewhat. I don't think I have that quote dead on. But um, happy 420 to all my people who participate. Going back into talking about this Taurus energy. Let me tell y'all. As a natal Venus and Taurus person... Hold on, like, gotta light up my blunt. As a natal Venus and Taurus person, I think it makes so much sense for me. Before I knew about astrology and have really looked into my chart, one thing that people that know me my entire life could say is, like, how I indulge in food. It's not like, okay, oh yeah, there's some things that I like to eat. No. Food for Venus and Taurus people is legit an indulgent experience, okay? I think we all get a flavor of this while Venus is in Taurus, especially since the sun is also in Taurus, and we're getting the opportunity to look at some Taurian themes. Now, for a lot of you who may not be a Taurus sun or really have any Taurus planetary placement, this does not mean that you don't have any Taurus energy in your birth chart. First of all, wherever Venus shows up, is going to be some of that Taurus energy for you. But if you look at your entire chart wheel, where you have every sign, which is something that I argue with people about a lot, because they want to tell me they don't have any of this sign or that sign, but you do. You do. It's creeping in one of your houses. But um, going back to looking at your chart to where this Taurus energy will um, be activated you need to find that so look for where Taurus energy begins in your chart we're going to have some live events where we can sit and better talk charts so that people can understand them a little bit better because I don't think people are getting the full benefit 
even if we're just looking at the sun, okay? Getting the full benefit of understanding sun transits or other planetary transits if you're not taking into account that your chart has the energy of all 12 signs and that when different planets move through each sign, it's gonna activate different parts of your chart. But going back into talking about Taurus season, um, I don't wanna sound like we're sticking to stereotypes, but that stubbornness, that Taurus energy gets associated with and for good reason. It's not like it's not fitting. I think it's important for all of us to be attuned to this. Some people who may have more fixed energy in their chart are used to being more stubborn. They can stand their ground pretty hard. And yes, there are things that you can work on if you notice that you do that a little bit too much to the point where it's causing friction in your interactions with other people. But then for some people who have a lot of cardinal or um, initiating, we can say, energy, or mutable or changeable kind of go with the flow energy, Taurus season is important because it gets us to a point where we can focus on where we should be more stubborn. Sometimes you do have to be more stubborn. We don't talk about that enough. You know, stubbornness just gets looked at as a negative trait. You know, hard to move. The world could fall down on your head and you would never move. Sometimes you got to stick with your gun. Now, since we're looking at the sun, the sun's projective. So during Taurus season, Taurus traits can be projected. Now, when I talk about this, you guys hear me say keywords all the time. There's, there's a huge reason why I'm always pushing for people to understand keywords. Because essentially, we're breaking everything down that is, when we're talking astrologically, into 12 categories, right? So knowing, knowing the keywords are severely important to helping you understand certain energies. If we're going to step inside of Taurus energy right now, what is it that we're actually doing? If we want to embody Taurus energy right now, what exactly are we doing? Well, do you want to find out? Well, <laughs> I'm sure you do. As with any sign, there are positive, negative, and neutral keywords. And there are a ton. I choose to stick with the ones that stick out the most, that are the most recognizable. Now, you can Google these. You can look them up. But Saturn time. I've, oh, my phone is telling me it's Saturn time. Time to work, work, work. Anyway, so... We know that earth signs in general are practical. So Taurus is an earth sign, so we've got this practical energy. How can some, something or someone, you can even say in some cases, be used practically? What does that actually mean? It means that we're able to find a good use for things. Okay, so that's the lens through which Taurus energy is kind of viewing things. Is this useful? Is it valuable? Okay. Um, of course, they're earthy. Foodie is definitely a word up there with Taurus energy. Taurus energy represents grounded earth, feeling secure, right? And what do we need as human beings? Of course, we need air, right? We need water. We need food. These are things that help to sustain us. Taurus energy can be conservative. Some people would say in some cases they can be a bit selfish because they want to conserve what they have because they value what they have so much. And I need to stop saying they because it just makes it seem like I'm talking about Taurus signs. I'm going to switch up my verbiage. Taurus energy in general. This is me talking about Taurus energy, not sun sign and Taurus people, just Taurus energy in general. Because as I said, in everybody's chart, you'll be able to point out where there is that Taurian energy. So <clears throat> here's some keywords. Reliable. Security. Some people would say greedy or hedonistic. That indulgence. I'm telling you, they're enduring, deliberate, patient. Now, as the sun is shining a light on some of those areas in our own lives, can you see where even if you are not a Taurus sun or don't have heavy Taurus placements, how these themes are still resonant with your life? And when you take a look at your chart and see where 
the sun is actually going to be transiting, what house or houses, what do you find? We also have lazy in here, <laughs> negative keyword, but listen, my Venus and Taurus loves a lazy Saturday. Um, love, beauty, art, but from the appreciative, tangible perspective, and I want to talk about something too. The sun is in Taurus and Venus is in Taurus. And I hear people talk a lot about as soon as you think love, people automatically go to Venus. And I understand that. It makes sense. But we're talking about two different kinds of love and both can be attributed um, to either the sun or Venus. The sun, which rules Leo, of course, is unconditional love. This is like parent-child love, best case scenario. Like truly unconditional love is the sun and Leo energy by default, right? But appreciative love is Venus. How you appreciate the beauty in your life, how you appreciate what you have, how you appreciate the connections that you have to other people. When you are looking at how you love you're not just looking at venus you also want to look at a couple of other places in the chart too but the reason that i'm pointing out that there's a difference between this unconditional love expression and the appreciative love expression is because if you understand how a person appreciates what they have their relationships beauty enjoyment things that you know bring pleasure if you understand that about a person you understand a lot so, Venus and Taurus people are going to be more appreciative of hands-on things, touch, things that spawn and encourage the five senses to just really go on a journey and just be like, oh, just get lost in it, indulge in it, you know? Almost become one with it. Now, the Venusian love of appreciation has this... I would say has this air about it. If you go through all the 12 signs and you think about how they would all operate with Venus in, in each of them, there would be some differences. But the air in general around Venus, it's both heavy and light. The reason that I say that is the Earth portion of it, Taurus energy, is the heavy portion of it whereas it also rules Libra which is the light I mean air air is light right the air portion of it that kind of flits about in understanding different parts of Venus I really think it's important especially if you're doing rituals if you have certain things that you have going on where Venus is the focus you know are you embodying the Taurian side of Venus the Libran side of Venus or both and are you familiar with where they differ? This is important to look at, I believe, in Taurus season because, first of all, every astrological new year, clock kind of restarts, so to speak. We begin again at Aries season, and then we go to Taurus season. So Taurus season is going to be the first Venusian ex um, experience that we have fully every year, as far as the sun is concerned and where it's located. So, again, associated with the words I have, which is the second house, which is Taurus energy, that therefore can also be attributed to Venus. So when we look at collectively right now, how we all could appreciate what we have, right? Appreciate what we want, okay? Appreciate our connection. Appreciate where we are because Taurus is situated where it is. Sometimes we need some of that. We fall short a lot of times in understanding that there's blessings located in every day and every minute and every hour. We just have to find and embrace them when we are going through things. And it's not like I'm the sort of person that's going to sit here and go, oh, I haven't been through stuff. I've been through some shit, right? I don't look at life the same way that I used to. And I realized that we can kind of clock things, so to speak, as far as what we'll collectively experience based on the astrological season. But when you look at your particular birth chart and you start to understand why you experience certain feelings um, that seem to kind of repeat, 
during the year and you're looking at the times of year in which they're happening, it's like you're getting a sense for astrological energy at its best, okay? Because you can feel Taurus. Did you not feel that shift from that fire energy of Aries? That was kind of riled up energy. I enjoyed it because it helped me to um, light a fire under some things that needed a fire lit under them. But now that we found a direction to go into and we've used that Aries energy to propel ourselves forward, now, okay, here's where we are. Tar season. What do we do with what we have? How do we make what we have sustain us? That's what this energy is about. What can we really hold on to? Now, granted, sometimes there's beauty in letting go, too. But in a moment where you might feel like you don't have much, do you know what a blessing it is to realize that you already have so much? And this sounds cliched, and I know sometimes when people tell people this, that are experiencing something rather negative, they don't, they don't want to hear that. I know I didn't want to hear it. I damn sure did not want to hear it. But it didn't make it any less true. What we can collectively kind of look at is where the value lies in Taurus season. That value can lie with things you are yet to have. That value can lie with things that you already possess. But do you recognize the value? Are you taking that into account? Now, value isn't always just about money, but not that money isn't important, but value value itself is what we make it what's valuable to me may not be valuable to someone else so there's a very subjective and personal experience about value knowing this look at how people are acting during tara season see if you can guess what they value i guarantee you you'll be able to tie that into where the sun is transiting their their chart <clears throat> aspects that are being made different things that are going on personally for that person but since value is subjective in the way that we're talking about it in a Torian sense see if you can kind of see what really means something to people based on what they say and what and how they act you know they're showing you their value focus where they're focused as far as their values now looking back at this chart sorry huh we can't forget about mercury now we have the sun being unconditional love so you know the luminary that is super big and cannot be denied is in the sign of values and money and security and tangible things and nurturing too because Taurus can nurture because it has the resources to do so so you know that's an energy that's being projected out you know so people are actually kind of like receiving this energy and it's operating in a way that no matter how a person's day goes I'm guaranteeing you you can find a way that they behave to kind of tell on them as far as what is important to them in every situation it's it's fascinating and it's interesting to me that <clears throat> while you know especially when we have to be out in the world around a lot of other people and deal with different temperaments and different ways of viewing the world the world can sometimes feel like a strange place I feel like I got really free in not giving a fuck which when I first came across this concept, I was like, first of all, how will I ever not give a fuck? I feel like I give too much of a fuck about things. But how will I ever learn not to care so much about certain things? And I think my my Taurus energy helped a lot with that. A whole lot with that. I have natal Venus and Taurus in the seventh house. So in the house of relationships and Libra's house. So there's a lot of Venusian energy going on right there. There's both receptive and projective energy there. Now, when I think about some of the things that I used to care about or place value in, because if you care about something, there's some value there. There has to be. Otherwise, why are you wasting your time, right? 
when I think about where I projected this energy, it's like, it was towards stuff that weren't, wasn't of value to me, really, in the long run. So I started separating things into categories. Like, is this worth it to have this interaction? Is it worth it to have this conversation? Is it worth it to do this? Is it worth it to not do this? Like, you know, just weighing things out in that way. This is a time frame where I feel like the universe is presenting me with an opportunity uh, to really be cognizant of those things. So take it. I'm telling you, it's helpful. Once I figured some stuff out, there was no stopping me. <laughs> there was no stopping me as far as growth. Because where you show interest, you know, where you're drawn to, number one, that's very telling of something within you that makes you resonate with a thing, a person, a whatever, right? There's something very personal about that. You can like things and be called to things, but once you're actually... Like, let's say, for instance, when I was a kid, I was really obsessed with music. I don't think I've ever not been obsessed with music. But I mean, back then it was like even more so. And I was like kind of more of an indoor child. My, my mom wasn't the kind that really liked you outside. We used to watch videos a lot. This is when I discovered I could rap and that like I was just drawn to it, right? So I've been drawn to a lot of things, but it's not until you actually meet up with said thing and start doing it that you realize whether or not it's valuable to you or not. There's a lot of things I've been drawn to that once I actually embarked upon doing them, they weren't really my thing. But when something extra kicks in and you're like, yes, you've recognized the value in said things, whether it be... Um, valuable valuable as far as the amount of time you'll have to put into it is what you're putting in, what you're getting out is normally what people look into it with when we're deciding whether something's valuable or not. Am I getting less than I put in? Because nobody wants to do that. So you can break every area of your life down into understanding that if you want to really be aware of where a person is with their value systems, where a person is with what's important to them based on what they hold tight to during Taurus season, what you see come out, what they're giving their focus to. Value focus season, y'all. Really, really interesting. Severely interesting. But um, I hope, I mean, and we'll put it to you this way, with Mercury joining the party, with this Taurus energy, Listen, (laughs) basically, the way that I'm going to look at it is this. There's going to be two ways that you can pretty much see where a person's value is probably not in the place that's most valuable for them, but they're not aware of that when you enter Mercury into the party. Now, your thought processes are defined by your natal Mercury, like how you operate. You look at your progressive Mercury as well, because we all do grow and evolve. But on a collective scale, if the focus of the sun is on value, right? And then we have the value planet itself, the relationship planet itself, the appreciating planet itself, Venus, also in Taurus, loving it here. Then you've got Mercury here. So, you know... We're looking at projective and receptive um, expressions of Taurus. So Taurus energy is both being projected at us, right? And we're both more open to receiving it during this time frame. Then you bring the mental processes in. You bring the Mercury in and you're like, oh, well, shit. This shit is going to be heavy on the mind. Because we point to Taurus energy as being fixed and stubborn and dedicated the reason that I'm saying that you'll be able to see more of what's going on with Mercury in Taurus too is because what is on people's minds is what they're going to discuss. What people value and are fixated on is what they're going to do. Let me see. See. I promise you it'll make sense. 